Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Big day today. We're going to try and get this thing finished like now. Don't freak out. It's okay. We got a bunch more builds coming up and I mean a bunch, like so many that you're going to want me to take up like the trombone building or something by the time I'm done. Anyway, this thing is looking great. If you've been living under a rock, this is the SG kit guitar build from Solo Music Gear done exclusively with Walmart, Home Depot, that kind of stuff, hand tools, aside from the soldering iron. And this is a contest with Derek from Big D Guitars. So if you haven't seen his channel and watched what he did to his, check out the link in the description, go see him, let him know how bad I kicked his butt. And if you want one of these guitar kits, check out the link for Solo Music Gear, also in the description, pick one up from there. We've got our space theme on the front. We went with a gentle hammered finish on the back. The worn kind of look on the neck. I realize that's not necessarily consistent with the rest, but I really wanted the tongue oil finish on here because it just is the best feeling finish for a neck that, I, that I've ever played, in my opinion. And then, yeah, semi-gloss finish on the front and everything. I think it's looking fantastic, and it is time to get this thing assembled. Now, in our last video on this one, part of what we did was the pick guard for this. So this has a pick guard that goes right here, and I didn't want to cover up the graphics, so I hollowed it out by hand, kind of dangerous, kind of stupid, took forever, great times. Anyway, did that, and you know, I gotta say, the response was amazing. I, I know you guys love this thing. I'm sorry to disappoint all of you, but anyway, um, what we're gonna do instead is just put the screws in. And once they're in, I'm gonna take a look and see if I wanna paint them black or white or just leave them silver. I've been thinking about it. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna leave them silver, yeah. They're gonna look good like that, and whoever ends up with this guitar may wanna change it, so why wouldn't I just leave them silver? That's probably what I'm gonna do. I may change my mind, don't hold me to that. So just quickly before we dive into the assembly here, for anybody whose ears perked up when I said whoever ends up with this guitar, the plan here is for me to quickly figure out how to auction this thing off. I'm gonna auction it off and donate the money to a local children's hospital here. Uh, I've got a bunch of friends that work there, and it's a great place. And yeah, I want to help support them. So that's the plan for this guy. I'm going to figure out how to auction it off. And uh, hopefully one of you ends up with it, I guess, or somebody else. It doesn't really matter to me who ends up with it as long as I can donate some money to the hospital. So I will do a separate announcement video on that, on where you can bid on it if you're interested uh, and how you can get it. And yeah, hopefully it does some good. That's about it. Let's get to work on assembling this thing once again. You've seen me do it. I did it earlier in the series before the paint job, tested it out and everything. This time I obviously need to do the intonation and set up properly and whatnot. Can't be so lazy about it, but we're gonna get that done right now and we'll try to blast through it relatively quickly because you've seen it before. And then we'll, uh, we'll test this guy out. All right, final assembly, exciting time. So step one here is to remove all the tape. I'm using needle nose pliers to take it out of the post holes, but you know, you can pull that out however you want. It really doesn't matter. Sometimes it's easiest to just kind of use a screw. Um, if you're using a really strong film finish, like a 2K paint, you're going to want to be more careful about cutting around the cavities. Sometimes that stuff bridges the gap between the guitar and the tape, and you can end up tearing off a big chunk of it when you go to remove the tape. This stuff is an acrylic clear coat, so it doesn't really have that issue to the same extent. I'm still very careful about how I pull it out because I don't want to kind of peel anything off. But for the most part, you don't have to worry so much with these types of finishes as you would with like an automotive clear. Really, this part's about as straightforward as it gets. You just have to make sure you don't leave any tape behind. And yes, I have done that before. Not on a spray can job like this one, but on a complicated airbrush job when you're cutting apart your frisket or your masking tape in a whole bunch of different places in order to do kind of your rough in work with the airbrush. Sometimes a little chunk gets left behind. So just be diligent. Make sure you're getting it all out of there. I start by putting in my neck pickup because I have to feed that wire through both cavities. Then I put in the bridge pickup. If you do it the other way around, you're probably not going to have a great time. You can tell which way the pickups go in by the way that they're set into the pickup rings. Um, but if you can't, you know what? It doesn't really matter that much. Just put them in the way that looks good to you. Now, one of the benefits to me pre-assembling this guitar before I went ahead and painted it was that I already had all these holes marked out. The guitar didn't come with those in place. 
I had to, well, I should have drilled them, but I didn't have a hand drill, and there are a lot of rules to this contest, so I went ahead and pre-screwed them in beforehand, and the holes are there, so I know where they all go. I also have the holes for the pick guard, but I'm not using anymore, but as it turns out, I'm pretty happy with how this looks when I get the screws in there. You'll see in a moment uh, what it looks like with all four or five of them in place. Is it six? It's six. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I figured it'd look cool, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how it turned out with these on there. Once those are in place, I can go ahead and start putting in my electronics, just getting my switches and potentiometers kind of set in place and getting the nuts on there. So you throw your washer on first, obviously, and then the nut, and I just use a little wrench to tighten them up after, but for now I'm getting them hand tight so that they're all just in position. You may want to check a picture or wiring diagram to make sure everything's in the right place, particularly the volume and tone knobs, but it's pretty straightforward. The two volume knobs go toward the front of the guitar, closer to the neck, and the two tone knobs go behind that. Pretty tough to screw that up, but if you do, well, you just pull the pots out from the front and, uh, you know, move them. Also not that difficult. Now, we talked about how to wire this guy up in my previous video there where I assembled it with the raw wood on it and did a demo. Right now, everything is already basically wired up, so it's a simple matter of connecting literally a couple wires, and by a couple wires, I mean just the pickups. I have to connect the pickups to the pots. We'll get to that in a second. First up, I'm putting my bridge posts in here, the threaded inserts. The reason I did the electronics in part before that was because you have to remember to put your ground cable in. If you forget that, it's going to be a really noisy guitar. <laughs> Not ideal. So there is a little hole that goes from the stop tail post hole into the electronics cavity and that's where you run the little black ground cable and uh, when you pound the post into place like this, the threaded insert, it keeps that in place and makes good contact. Don't smash the threaded insert with the hammer directly. Uh, you're better off to use a little piece of wood like I was there to protect it so that you don't have to worry about warping it and having the posts not thread in there properly. Now this time I'm protecting the area around the cavity in case I accidentally drip solder. Uh, it shouldn't happen because I'm only doing a couple small pieces, but it does happen to some people some of the time and it's really easy to just tape around there and not have to worry about it. I skipped that taping step on a burn finish guitar once and someone commented that I should really protect it or I might leave a burn mark. So that was that was a chuckle. Anyway, your pickups to connect them to the pots, pretty straightforward. These things aren't all going to be the same color coming out of the factory, but in any event, you are going to have one coated wire and then the bare wire around it. The bare wire is the ground. It's the sleeve, basically, and you connect that to the back of the pot. Unfortunately, my hand's in the way, so it's tough to see me do that, but you connect that to the back of the pot where all the other stuff grounds to. The other one goes opposite of the pre-grounded lug. So there are three lugs on each of these. One will be folded back or connected with a wire to the back of the pot, so it's grounded. Your hot's the other one. And then the rest of the pot is already pre-wired for you when you get the kit generally anyway. But if you have any confusion about it, just look up a wiring diagram. It will be easier to follow than trying to watch what I do here because my hands are in the way and I'm only connecting a couple of wires. You're going to want to twist together any wires that are going to the same place. It's going to be very difficult to solder them to the same spot if they're behaving as two separate wires. When you twist them together, it's like you just have one. It just makes it a little bit more robust. Whoever ends up uh, picking up this guitar... You're probably going to want to do some cleanup work in here. I've left the wires very long in case you want to do any kind of customization or anything. There's tons of extra. You can do pretty much whatever you want. I mean, you may want to replace some parts anyway, but there's lots of extra wire there for you. This rewire job, not the most beautiful thing I've ever done, but it works fine and should continue to work until someone gets in there to do a bit of a cleanup job. In terms of other soldering tips, make sure you tin your iron before you use it and clean it off, and then tin it once more and then it'll work better. Uh, use the iron to heat the area that you're trying to solder rather than to just glob solder onto it, and then the solder will flow right onto the wires that you're trying to solder rather than just glopping onto the iron and then you having to wait for them to try and heat up after that. 
It's always important to have a good quality soldering iron. It makes your life much easier. You can get away with all sorts of crazy stuff when you're doing guitars. At, I mean, the whole thing's Home Depot, but the soldering iron, it's just really difficult to wire up a guitar with a really cheap soldering iron. I've never found that it works very well. You either get one that's too weak and won't heat the pots, or one that is strong enough that you risk kind of ruining the electronics when you heat them up. So my recommendation to you is check out a decent one. The one that I'm using is from Weller. If you want it, you can grab it from the Amazon link in the description, but there are lots of good options out there. We're getting toward the end of the assembly here, so we're putting the truss rod cover on. My neck is still adjusted pretty much dead flat, but when I get the string tension on there, it's going to be good. I've tested it already. You've seen me do that. It works out just fine. So I've found that that's the case on many of my guitars. If I adjust them straight, then when I put the strings on, I get the relief that I need. But I can always take that truss rod cover off afterward, even with the strings on, move it to the side and make an adjustment if I need to. I get my tuning pegs on here next, just hand tight. Pretty straightforward as usual. Just make sure you're putting the right ones on the right side. I've already got the back pre well, not drilled. I put the screws in to the back so I know I can get my alignment correct again. All of this is quite straightforward. I just use a very small wrench after I've got these in place to tighten them up and we're good to go on the headstock. Speaking of the headstock, I really like this look with the natural edges, the kind of semi-gloss black face, and then the matte black back. I'm happy with how that turned out. I don't know if you guys like this. Let me know what you think of kind of the way that I finished the neck. Uh, just drop a comment. I know it doesn't really match the rest of the guitar 100%, but like I said earlier, the tongue oil finish I think is worth it, and uh, I'm still pretty happy with how it looks personally. Now you guys get to watch me put screws in for the next few seconds. How exciting is that? The fun part is I'm actually better at this than I am at the guitar playing, which will form part of the demo that I do later. So uh, enjoy the part that I'm reasonably competent at while you can, because it only goes downhill from here, folks. And these screws are seriously the worst thing to install. They strip all the time. So be careful when you're putting them in. Make sure you put lots of pressure on them. Then when you go to do this other part, it's going to be a lot easier because those screws are in place, so none of your pegs are going to turn too much, but I still use my finger to stabilize them a little bit, as you can see there, and I don't tighten them down too hard. You can crank them down, you know, after a couple months or whatever, but this guitar was painted recently enough that the paint may not be 100% hardened all the way yet, and I don't want to leave a massive impression in it. So we're just moving on to the finishing steps here. I put my strap buttons in. One of them goes in the bottom of the guitar, obviously. The other one I put kind of partway into the back of the horn, as you've seen me do before. Um, and then it's time to install the bridge and tailpiece and get the strings on there. So I put my tailpiece on first. What I do here is I go ahead and screw the posts all the way in. Not everybody does it this way, but... My preference is to have that angle coming off the back of the bridge pretty significantly. I've heard that it's a little harder on the strings, at least that's what some people say. I think that it gives them a little bit more tension, which is better, particularly if you're going to be using lower tunings. It's not a big deal either way. It's kind of a matter of preference, but this is how I like to do it. Those go all the way down. The bridge posts themselves, I put up just a little bit. Obviously, I'm going to have to adjust that height as part of my setup once the strings are on. I've just peeled the cover tapes nonsense off of the humbuckers so that's always an exciting moment and here I am just finally getting the knobs in place so this thing's really ready to go the aesthetics all nailed down I am not going to make you guys watch me string the guitar so uh, yeah don't worry but what I will say and I've said it before is that I always start with the outside strings I check those when I get the guitar kit I put those on first when I wire the guitar kit up, and then I work my way back and forth um, from the outside toward the middle so that I'm putting equal tension on either side of the neck. That's probably wildly unnecessary. It's just the way that I like to do it. It makes me feel like I'm being diligent about how I string things up. And uh, yeah, feel free to make fun of me for that if you want. I guess I'm a little bit OCD sometimes. But this thing's basically ready to go now. All right, guys, there she is. That 
Well, that looks awesome. I'm, I'm super happy with that, obviously. Uh, yeah. All right, we're gonna do a short little demo here because this video is already getting pretty long uh, and you've already seen me do one, except this time the guitar is intonated and properly tuned, hopefully. We'll probably do another one when we come back to announce the auction so that uh, you guys can, you know, buy this if you want. And like I said earlier, money will go to charity. So let's bring the camera in closer. We'll do a short little demo, like I said. Uh, let's keep in mind that I can't hear what I'm doing because the amp's going out and I don't have the headphone stuff because I don't record music because I suck at playing guitar. So only part of that suck is really my fault and part of it is because I just can't hear what I'm doing. Yeah, nobody's gonna believe that excuse. All right, let's get going. Well, I'm sure that was nothing short of uh, special. Anyway, there we go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you uh, managed to sit through the demo. And I hope you like the guitar. We'll have another video coming up on this one in the relatively near future once I figure out how to auction it off best. If anybody knows how best to do that, I am open to suggestions. So, yeah. That's it for this project. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to tune in for the next one. It should be starting right away. We're going to build another kit. I think probably the Ash Burl Top Telecaster this time. That's going to be awesome. Got a nice binding, really cool wood top. We'll talk about some interesting ways to finish that. And uh, as usual, we'll do the full build demo and then you'll have to suffer through me playing that one too. Uh, not sure what we're going to do with that one once it's done, but we know what's happening to this one. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Remember to subscribe so you can see the next video and, uh, well, and the next series and, and whatnot. And yeah, as always, have a good one. I'll see you next time.